All right, welcome everybody to the April 13th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As we are all aware, looking at the attendance here, yep, everybody's aware of antitrust policy uh, that we must abide by and our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, so for announcements today, we have the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you do have something that you would like to include in there, like Stephen, maybe this new documentation site, um, please do leave a comment on the wiki page there in the uh, that is linked in the agenda. Other announcements that anybody would like to make today? No, okay. Uh, so for quarterly reports, uh, we have the BASU report. Uh, I looked at it this morning. I think there's two people we're waiting for reviews on so that we can merge that. Uh, we have the CACDI report that has come in as well. Uh, it was due today. So uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to look at that, please do. I didn't see any questions or comments on either of these that we do need to talk about in this meeting, but if anybody has anything they'd like to bring up, now is your time. Okay, uh, so for the past due reports, uh, we do have the uh, transact report that was due February 23rd. Um, the issue and the pull request that Peter opened last week, I did not see any updates as of two days ago when I created this agenda. Um, so no comments, nothing has happened there for those um, pull requests or those issues. Uh, they're still waiting for any of the transact maintainers to respond to. Um, so I don't know what that specifically means, but it is pending or, or lending towards um, maybe that this is a uh, project that has gone um, silent. So I, I think I will potentially give that another week and then maybe uh, if we don't hear anything from that, maybe I'll open the end of life ticket like I did for grid and we'll see if we can get any responses coming from that. Any thoughts on that? Stephen, um, should the TOC have the right to merge a pull request or the authorization to merge a pull request? Uh, so we haven't in the past had that right. Uh, we have left that up to the maintainers. Although something like this, right, that is uh, an update to documentation typically like when we do the end of life or we do a dormant we will um, push a pull request to the, the repo to make sure that the readme states kind of the status of it mm -hmm. um but typically we don't force those pull requests to be merged do you think we should or does anybody think that we should have that right as the toc I, I kind of think that, you know, reading through the security document that Hart wrote and then this, that there are times when it seems like it should be a good idea, but I'm not sure. As a non-maintainer and non-TOC member and a person who frequently uses force majeure to merge pull requests, um, I would counsel against doing it. Um, they are the maintainers for a reason. Yeah. Um, I'm willing to take the heat. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think it's a good idea to say, and by the way, TOC members have a merge bit on every project. Yeah. Okay. I certainly TOC okay. members, um, and certainly not acting alone, but, but I get you. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I also have the feeling that um, I mean, this brings. I mean, if if we get the right to to merge things on on a project where we are not the maintainer, I mean, this um, gives us. I mean, 
mighty powers a little bit and contradicts a little bit of the advisory role we should actually play. So I'm also okay. against it. Okay, thanks Marcus. Or no? Uh, so I agree to the extent that the maintainers are actually responsive. There's a limit, right? If they don't respond at some point, well, who's going to do it? Sure. That's what I meant by doing it, you know, force majeure, right? Where, yeah. Um, so if the TOC were to vote to EOL transact today, which I think would be great, I would merge the pull request that um, Peter put in to say, here's where the code lives. And then I would uh, also have a PR that changed the, in the settings.yaml file to make it archived for all the transact repos. So I, that's what I would do. That's the mechanics yeah, of yeah. yeah. So that's essentially what I was saying. I guess um, the only thing would be whether it has to be combined with an end of life or not. And I guess it doesn't really matter because if it's not an end of life, then they're actually responding and the maintainers are doing what they should do. So yeah, probably irrelevant. All right. So I think we we did we have discussed this in the past where maintainers are not responsive. And we have um been vocal about it like how long we should wait to take an action and i see it's been waiting for nine days and probably we will give that period of time grace period before we take an action uh, but in this case let's see if we can remind them one more time and i'll do that on the discord okay uh arun i think that's your responsibility as vice chair to remind people of past due reports so um, feel free to do that. I agree. Yeah. Peter? Peter, we can't hear you. I can't hear you. Peter, you are muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Too many microphones. So I was just going to say, I agree that the TUC should not merge pull requests left and right uh, on active projects. But I also say that special cases like when it's being end of life or it's being redirected because it's been low key abandoned. I feel like that is a special case. And maybe if, if not the TUC, but the staff should definitely have some sort of uh, legitimate claim to merge pull request that does nothing but updates documentation to point people to the new code repository. So I would, if we were going to define what is allowed and what is not, I agree generically any pull request should not be merged, but this would be definitely one of the edge cases where I think it's beneficial to allow it. All right, thanks, Peter. Hart? Uh, I sort of agree with Rai here that maybe it's not so good to have lots of people with PR privileges on a project where they aren't maintainers. Um, you know, I, th I think that the TOC has plenty of tools to deal with projects where, you know, pull requests need to be done. Uh, so, you know, maybe those tools would be more useful instead. All right, thanks, Kurt. So from what I hear, status quo uh, for the way that we've been doing things uh, where TOC does not have uh, any sort of special privileges on the different repos across uh, the Hyperledger organization. And if we do obviously vote uh, for something on at the TOC level to that would require some sort of readme update or some sort of archive update, uh, then that ends up falling to most likely Rai or somebody else on the staff. Did I get that correct? 
Yeah, that's the status quo, and I I think it should remain. Okay. Sounds good. Um, then the second overdue report that we have is URSA. Um, I didn't see any reminders going out since the last time that Stephen sent one out. Um, Arun, it might be worth sending a, a message out to the URSA folks as well to see if anybody might respond to that. Tracy. All right, as far as upcoming reports, we do have the fabric one that is due today. So hopefully we'll be seeing that one show up here in GitHub shortly. Uh, there are no reports due next week. Um, so um, we'll just make sure that we get the ones that we do have in GitHub reviewed and merged. All right, uh, so then for discussion items today, uh, we do have uh, just a short update, I think, maybe on the GitHub actions and where we're at, uh, and then also task force discussions. Any other topics that anybody would like to make sure we cover today? No. Okay. So, Rai, could I ask you to give a, a short update on GitHub actions and where we're at there? Sure. So, uh, we had a great meeting with GitHub and uh, a lot, we learned a lot. Um, one thing that they did is they gave us a gratis pro account, which bumps the number of concurrent runners, uh, to the concurrent free runners up to 60 from 20. So that's good. Um, and another thing that they gave us access to was the, um, a beta program for large runners. And I set up two large runners. And the interesting thing about these two large runners is I don't know what they are, um, but they can build up to 50 jobs at once. Um, I've turned this on for five specific repos as I'm testing it out to see how it goes. Turns out they're much faster than the old ones. Um, so I'm looking for, I guess, volunteers of projects. I just, right now we have just a few repos and I, I want to test this slowly. So if anyone wants to volunteer a repo um, to try this out, uh, please reach out directly. Peter? Uh, I was gonna say I volunteer cacti but then you said directly. Okay. Well, let, let's uh, let's talk offline. Okay. And uh, that's all I got. David? I'll also add that they invited, they gave us a few invitations to an upcoming maintainer summit and they were very excited and interested in having people from Hyperledger come and join that. It's going to, I think they said, right, correct me if I'm wrong, around 100 maintainers from other open source projects that use GitHub. And they were hoping that, you know, some people would, from Hyperledger would come and share their opinions and experience and engage in discussions. So it's, we just have a few invitations. I did email a few people about that. So if you're interested, let me know. If you haven't gotten an email from me and you're interested, let me know too. Uh, um, but they were wanting to get a, a total from us or the names from us within the next week or so. So um, just be aware that there is that event next month. And if you're interested, uh, let me know. David, that's a virtual summit, right? Yeah, thanks for clarifying. Exactly, yes, 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 virtual. Is Rye gonna be on? Cause that would be really good. Yeah, Rai is going, but we had a few other invitations, so I reached out to some other maintainers as well. Yeah, they gave us five invites, and uh, we've reached out, so. All right. Thank you for the update, Rai and David. Um, looks like we're making some progress here we might not have to have the github actions update on the meeting every week um i guess let us let us know how that's going if we 
um, are seeing improvements across the board. That's great. Um, and we'll, we'll keep up to date if we need to uh, on other future changes. All right. Um, David, I just lowered your hand, so I'm hoping that's good. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the task force discussions that we do have today are both Bobby's. Um, Bobby, if we don't get to both of these today, it's fine, um, because typically we only do one, but I know uh, that you're in charge of both of these, so I did put them both on the calendar or on the agenda for today. So um, feel free to start with the one that you want, and uh, we'll go as long as we need to on uh, on this until we've reached our time. Sounds good. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start off uh, with a little background. Um, so the task force have come out of the new TOC, um, moving like the learning materials working group out of a working group and into more of a community accessible uh, resource. Uh, with that said, the task force has certain things that need to be done, and we both task forces, the onboarding and documentation, <clears throat> applied for the mentorship program and both got accepted. So now there's both um, mentees coming on um, to these projects. So there's a lot of activity going on. People are getting ready to interview the mentees. It's getting very exciting. So right now, our main goal for both of these task forces is to kind of define what we Try, and I, I apologize, I have dogs here I can't get rid of, so they're snoring, um, if that's what you hear in the background. <laughs> um, so these task forces goals now are, are trying to define what the task forces are going to be doing, as opposed, including what the mentees uh, portion of that is, because now they're going to be kind of intertwined. So the, the mentees will meet with us every Monday when we meet for both of these task forces. Um, there'll be more deliverables uh, set out on a weekly basis as per the mentorship program. So right now, uh, I'm not going to say confusion, but both of these task forces are redefining their deliverables um, to try to figure out exactly what we need from both of them. Um, so this is a good time for me to do this with the TOC because I'm looking for as much input as possible. Um, this is a wiki page. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Um, what this is the on, so we'll start with the onboarding task force. So the onboarding task force goal is to make people who come to either the website or the wiki page get where they need to be within a click or two. We don't want, because it takes even me forever to find things and, and I'm usually the one who put them there. So it's, it's hard to really navigate through some of these screens. So uh, we started with the website with use and learn and the participate, because if you go to the main page, they're going to um, analyze that. So we have, um, I'll start at the beginning, actually. We have tasks set up, um, the deliverables that we actually want um, to accomplish. And the first one was, again, identify where people come on to our community. And that was the wiki page and the website. And then the next task was identify areas for improvement. So that's kind of where we are now. We, um, John had a um, document for, um, let me find it for a second. I'll have to look for John, John's use and learn and Peter's participate, but they analyzed both of those onboarding and they had uh, gonna put their recommendations here for our next meeting. Uh, again, the next section was the wiki page and the get started. And there is a uh, PowerPoint there that we're going to get some recommendations on how to update that with David. He was in the meeting, so it's um, something that he agrees that needs to be spiced up a little bit, maybe incorporate the new um, marketing um, initiative that's going on, um, that kind of thing. Um, and then the next was the frequently asked questions. And again, those need to be updated as well. So we're looking for the mentee to maybe help with that um, and get um, the onboarding mentee get that um, situated. And we'll go look at the onboarding uh, mentee's uh, application in a second, um, not, or mentorship application in a second. And then again, in the meeting, um, we were talking about maybe doing a different look. This is a, a website um, 
um, that was introduced in the meeting. And again, the meetings are all recorded. If you need to listen to them, this is a really fascinating one where we're trying to get a website up that maybe helps out with the documentation and helps out with everything that's going on um, in the community. And again, all these links are here. And what we're more looking for is um, ideas and um, like, what do you want to see? How would you be um, able to jump into this community? Where were the buttons that you want? I mean, if you want people to get involved in your project, do any of these, these use and learn and participate, go look at them and see, do they help you out? If not, you can go right to this wiki page again and just put a recommended, you jot your name in here and say, I think this needs to look better. I think this, or right now we can open it up for discussion um, and talk about how onboarding can be easier. Again, we didn't even get to the um, section on the wiki page uh, where it's just the uh, tasks that are being done in the community. So right now I'm going to pause and ask anybody if they have any questions. Go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, so Bobby, I guess the, the question that I have is really around if we look at kind of what these um, current processes are that are, are being reviewed, my thinking is that this is more for somebody new to the community who's just starting um, and I know when we started this task force we were discussing the different personas if you would um, and so I want to I'm curious if this is only that persona that we're looking at right now or do we think that we should be adding the other personas at this point too well, that's what we're trying to determine, like who you are and where do you hit. Um, so the first step is to figure out what we have and what, what we think should be updated about it. So again, like with the frequently asked questions, they need to be categorized because, again, I have different questions than someone who, you know, is a developer who wants to become a maintainer for, you know, there's all different, again, personas or, or users of this documentation. So we strongly recommend categories for a lot of the different um, places, but everybody's coming in in the same place. No matter who you are, you're going to go to the website or you're going to go to the wiki page to get information. Or the Discord channel, which again, we did not include this, which will be included next week. Um, so we're just trying to understand where the points are people are coming in. And again, like for the developers, I'm going to just see if I can take this real quick. When you come into the wiki page, which is you know, where the web page will direct you if you're a developer, where do, you, where do you go if you want to get involved in, a you know, a project? Obviously, you would go right here to Fabric if you wanted to do something for Fabric. I don't know if you would um, know from here how to get involved. So, like, to me, that's an extra click because now I have to go back and see, oh, where is that, like, actually? And then maybe it's here. Maybe it's the recent issues or... You know, and that's where you go to these buttons, which we started to analyze. So, again, we're looking for recommendations on how to get people to be able to go to the wiki page and know where they need to go. And then obviously give them the information to onboard them. But first, we have to figure out how they're getting there and where they need to go. And, I, and any suggestions, come to the meetings Monday at noon, Eastern Daylight Time. or raise your hand right now and we'll jot some notes down or. Yeah, I, I wonder, Bobby, how many people show up at, at, at in GitHub first? Um, if that's an entry point for people, uh, it's hard to say, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I guess what I'm thinking is that each of the potential entry points that we have should be, um, should allow for some sort of redirection to where people might actually end up going. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I, it's been a while since I've actually looked at the um, GitHub uh, Hyperledger page, right? Like, but I'm wondering if there is something specific there that 
um, you know, takes you or makes you helps you understand all of the different repos because we've got a ton of different repos there. Um, and I'm guessing probably not. And so maybe that's something that we should take a look at as well. Okay, just trying to, computer's very slow. I was trying to get to, to, to GitHub, but I'm trying to move it over, but we'll have to work on that another time. So yeah, so I put um, these two in here too. So for Monday, when the um, task force meets, we'll talk about what the GitHub, and if anybody wants to, again, to, to be a part of that, go ahead and just leave your recommendations here. Um, if, you know, what they think of entering in GitHub, again, are there directions, are there guides to, to you know, make you get to where you need to be in a click or two? Nobody wants to be going back and forth. Um, and same thing with Discord. You know, I know Discord's done really well. Uh, kudos. I mean, you get there, you know, exactly what community you're in. You know, the, the categories are clearly defined on the left. Everybody knows, you know, who's online. It's it's very well done. So that's, that I don't think is going to have anything but all positive recommendations. So again, that's the onboarding task force. And we meet Mondays. Here is a, one more thing I wanted to go to. Where is it? It's the mentorship. No, I'm going to go that way. I don't know if I have the mentorship program here. Oh, there it is. So again, now we're, we're having people who are going to apply for this um, and then we're going to interview them to make sure that we um, get someone with the best qualifications, but we'd have to answer the question, what are we looking for them to do? So what qualifications do they need? So we're looking for them, um, you know, to gain this information, which again, is in line with what we're talking about. We just now have more places that um, we need to research for onboarding. So again, we're really in line with task two of the task force goals, um, which is analyzing the onboarding um, spots that people come on and making recommendations. So again, if anybody, I know there was talk about documentation at the beginning of the call, we'd love to, any suggestions, websites, anything to help us get people two clicks to where they wanna go or three clicks, whatever. Um, so again, that's the onboarding task force. Um, leave it open for questions again. Okay, now the documentation uh, task force is kind of in the same um, place as the onboarding. We have a mentee coming on, we're defining their tasks. This is a little easier to define because it's documentation. It's um, pretty much straightforward. So uh, the ex what the task force deliverables are, we've gone over these before in, in past meetings. Um, one of the things we definitely want the mentee to work on is, uh, Last year, the lab project, uh, or a few years ago, mentorship project was for uh, the documentation uh, template, um, and it's still here. It needs to uh, be more robust. It needs to have updated instructions, um, which is what we're going to work on for that. Um, and that's clearly defined in, and again, any suggestions for that? That's one of the thing that the documentation task force or in the learning materials working group, we had done a lot of research on what everybody's using. We still have all that information, all those graphs. It's still there for the mentee to analyze and research um, and, and to definitely get some of these style guides going um, and help people um, with the tools and templates they need to uh, keep choices for them, but still keep it in the hyperledger look and feel, and also to categorize a lot of the uh, information in the um, community that is really hard to find. So there needs to be a way, like if you want to uh, figure out where to go, easier pathways to get there with the onboarding. Um, and the one big thing, which is, again, more of a task force than, um, I guess, a mentee uh, job is uh, 
at the end of the task force, we have to have recommendations back to the best practices task force. So when we want to finish this, we want our task force to say to that task force, we feel best practices for documentation are this. And I'm pretty sure a mentee is going to help out with that, but that's more the end uh, result for the task force. So those are the two places we are right now. One of the other things um, that I think a mentee should assist with, and I've talked to Min and David about this, is um, some of the uh, projects that got accepted in the mentorship have documentation needs, saying they want to document what they're doing and they want to do it right. They don't want to reinvent the wheel. So we were suggesting maybe um, the task force or the mentee, if they're up to speed enough, um, can do and give those recommendations to um, each one, either reach out through the initial mentee meeting or in some way get in touch with them to know that there's resources available in the community and, and what a great way to test them out, um, have the mentees test out the templates. So that's basically where the documentation task force is. Again, we do have uh, definite audiences that need uh, specific documentation guidelines on how to um, get to where they're supposed to be going. Um, and then the, uh, let me see if I have the mentorship for this. I have all the other mentorships, but I don't have this one. No, I don't have a link, but again, here are the task force uh, deliverables. If you want to check them out, um, they're all right there. Oh, I think I do. Yep, so this is the uh, mentorship application. So if you know if anybody's interested um, in doing this, please send them to the um, program, the mentorship program. It would be wonderful for them to apply for the mentor ship uh, all the information is in the hyperledger mentorship program on the wiki page so i'm going to ask if anybody has any questions or ideas on the documentation task force nope then well if anybody wants to get oh arun go right ahead not for the documentation task force, but the, the other one, the onboarding task force. I know previous conversations, so um, at least until the last year's mentorship program was that um, like we come up with expected um, deliveries. Like for instance, we come up with items that we want as part of the task force. And um, I know David wanted to connect with the Linux Foundation styling uh, team or the UX team to work on um, getting those contents onto the website. So it would be nice if that's part of the task force effort. Um, it is actually, um, I'm drawing a blank on the gentleman's name who was on the call, um, but he had designed this for us as a way to introduce that. And we're going to talk about it more on Monday. Perfect, thanks. And again, we really wanna, um, work on the start here and we're hoping more people who have ideas about that will show up on the meeting on Mondays. Okay, well, thank you for letting me present and I'll turn the meeting back over to Tracy. All right, thanks, Bobby. Uh, so any other topics that anybody would like to cover today? That was actually the end of our agenda, so. All right, no other topics. So I guess the ask then for uh, the folks who still need to review the outstanding reports, project reports, please do so. Uh, and I guess, I'm trying to think, I think best practices is the one that's up next. So Dave, you're up next week for a task force discussion. Okay. All right, so then we will see you all again next week. Thanks, Tracy. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye.